Income Tax 2021-2022 Tax Software Example Itemized Deductions Overview Get ready to get refunds to the max diving into Income Tax 2021-2022 Lacert Tax Software, you don't need tax software to follow along, but you might want the Form 1040, which you can find on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Our starting point here, single filer, Adam Smith, living in Beverly Hills, 90210, 100,000 W-2 income, the 12550 standard deduction, 87,450 taxable income. Mirroring that over here on our equation, 100,000, we got the standard deduction, 12550, 87,450. 450 taxable income letting the software do the calculation of the tax on page two of the 1515 plugging that into our worksheet with the 1515 back on over to page number one in prior presentations we looked at the income line items up top we looked at the adjustments uh, to income which you could also think of as the above the line deductions the schedule one deductions and the reason they call them kind of adjustments to income instead of a de deduction, even though in essence they are basically the same thing, they're decreasing the kind of income amount here or the net income is going down in essence. They call it that because basically this line item, the adjustments to income is usually the one that will be used when we talk about phase outs related to things like deductions and credits. When we look at these deductions down below, which are going to be the greater of the standard deduction or the itemized deductions, these then are not going to uh, be included in the subtotal of the adjustments to income. So they're not going to be included in that kind of phase out calculation that is applied to many credits and, uh, and deductions. So that's one way or one reason you want to keep these distinct another reason is that these items up tops the adjustments to income or the above the line deductions the schedule one deductions don't have that same comparison that need to be taken with the standard deductions and the itemized deductions in other words many times when people think about the deductions they think about some kind of itemized deductions so things that'll come to people's mind are things like jumping over to the schedule a medical and dental expenses taxes paid state tax possibly property taxes interest paid like mortgage interest gifts and charities which is typically or mainly and traditionally although there's an exception on the schedule a casualty and other itemized kind of deductions over here and note if i go back up to the form 1040 you only get those deductions if you're able to itemize and you would only do that if your itemized deductions are greater than the standard deduction that would be basically the general uh, rule so you want to keep those things in mind when people bring up like their medical expenses or these do i have to track that kind of stuff well are you close to the standard deduction if you're not then you're not going to get a benefit from it because you're not going to be able to itemize this is also something you want to keep in mind as a tax preparer to see how complex the return are and determine whether you want to focus on more or less complex returns more complex returns will typically be higher income individuals which will typically have to itemize the deductions will be involved in them and you'll have more tax planning more data input that cannot just be automated uh, more simplified returns possibly you can automate the process a little bit easier and drive your whole process with basically data input forms 1099s and w-2s for example uh, could, might be a little bit easier to do that so keep that in mind now just to consider these itemized deductions if i go into the itemized deductions schedule a then the if i look at these and say well what's going to be the big one that's going to push us over note that if they're already itemizing then all the itemized deductions matter so if they're itemizing and they they ask you about the medical there's still kind of this this uh this 7.5 that they have to clear on the medical so there's still kind of a question as to whether the medical is going to be beneficial we'll talk about that later but in general you might want to check out if any of these itemized deductions apply once you're over a certain threshold and already itemizing because it's more likely that you'll get a benefit from them and if you're not able to itemize then the question is what are the things that are going to push you over to being able to itemize the big one is usually going to be the interest in terms of mortgage interest that happens with the home purchase so the home purchase when you talk about a home purchase you're not talking about the purchase price of the home you're talking about the loan amount 
and not just the loan amount with regards to the deduction, but the interest related to the loan amount. So the higher the loan is and the higher the interest rate is at any particular point in time or the interest rate that someone qualifies for, then the more interest they're going to pay, that's going to be the deductible component here. And that could be a significant amount. There's limitations to it. We'll talk about it more later, but that's going to be the, the main thing. So you're going to ask someone, do you, do you own a home? Uh, and if they do, it's likely they got, a, they got a mortgage on it and it's likely they're paying significant interest and it's likely that that's going to be increased there. If they're a, a new client, you could ask them straight out, do you itemize, right? Do you own a home? Those are going to be significant factors. The other thing related to owning a home is you've got property taxes. So property taxes up top, the other big one that could be a deductible item up top. And, and those are the two things that often uh, push people over to being able to itemize. Now, you also want to think about this from a planning standpoint. So if someone was to ask you whether or not they should purchase a home or something like that, then you have to be kind of comparing the benefit that they would get from the added components to be able to itemize or not. And you could basically run projections in order, in order to do that because this person right here, for example, if this was all they had for the itemized deductions before they purchased a home, and you compare that to the standard deduction of the 12550 they're getting a huge amount of uh, of standard deduction over and above what they what they currently would be getting you know if they're if they would be itemizing so so even though the itemized deductions might push us over in this case to 12550 it's not like you're getting that whole amount like let's say that was 15000 it's not like you're getting that full amount of the 15000 cuz you were already getting 12550 and you had no other itemized deductions, right? So you got to look at that difference to see what the true impact on the taxes uh, would be. So to do that, we got to compare that to the standard deductions. If they're single, 12,550, married, you double it to 25,100, head of household in between then at the 18,800. So you can also say, well, if there's added conditions, like they're over a certain age or have conditions like blindness or something, you can go to page four of the 1040 SR where you've got those other uh, deduction limits here, which are the single, if one of those conditions apply 14,250 and then 15,950, you can mirror that on the tax software by saying if they were single and they had the single plus the one condition, there's where you get the uh, 14,250 and so on there so you can kind of you use their your worksheet to do that married filing joint if one condition applied 26 450 two and because they're married so now there could be four conditions that could apply so you can you can mirror that here and say okay what if i had married filing joint plus two of these this times two or two conditions met 27 800 so there's the 27 800 and so on and so forth just to get an idea of the comparison there i'm going to go back to the form 1040 so let's add let's just add a couple of the most common kind of itemized deductions and look at the comparison here so if i go back on over and say okay let's go to my schedule a let's check it out let's go to the schedule a deductions and let's go down to the interest and let's say the interest was was uh let's say the interest was six thousand let's say seven thousand mortgage interest and point seven thousand and let's say the taxes on the property taxes on the property were going to be let's say six thousand here on the property taxes so then if i go back on over so now we're at the 13 uh, 879 13 879 which we could see on the schedule a which is now populated if I go down to the schedule a now now that you're you're in the area of being able to take the deductions then some of these other things might apply then you might have unlocked the capacity to possibly get some more medical if to, to go into those and see if you can get a benefit from them the off the state taxes too could be something that would now be applicable to you in addition to the real estate tax that we put in there and then the seven thousand here could be applicable but still you're really only up to the to the 13 eight seven nine and before this point in time that's what you that's what you've kind of unlocked now before you were already at the 12 550 so it's not like you can't really say well now i got a deduction due to the due to purchasing the home of 13 879 because you really only got the difference 
of the 13879 and what you got what you got automatically before which is the 12550 that's the kind of thing you got to you got to consider when you're trying to figure out you know the tax benefits of like a home purchase or something like that you got to get a little bit more nuanced than just saying yeah i get to deduct all the interests yeah you do but you might not be getting a benefit from the whole thing so that's the general idea now if you ch if you change this let's have them get married now so if we had married people go into married jumping on over and say adam is going to get married to eve madam i'm adam and then they get married so we're going to go back on over so now they're married filing joint same 100,000 the income of course could go up possibly but we're going to keep the baseline at the 100,000 and now we've got the the 25 uh, 100 so now we've got the 25 100 and they if they have the same amount of itemized deductions they're no longer going to be taking the the itemized deductions because obviously the standard deduction is higher at this point in time that's why you want to keep an eye on the what the standard deduction is and the standard deduction increased greatly a couple years ago in, in an attempt to simplify the tax return and i think that that worked for a lot of people because again the itemized deductions are going to add a level of complexity and typically they're going to well in any case so now of course the itemized deductions over here are not being applied out because they're less than the standard deduction we can imagine a situation where these itemized deductions were increased over that threshold in order to be able to itemize in that instance so that's the you know the general idea or thought process you want to be thinking on this when you look at our formula over here then we can mirror this say there's the hundred thousand let's bring it back to single let's bring it back to single and say i'm gonna go okay let's bring this back to single single they didn't get married cold feet happened and they didn't get married we were just checking it out and so now we're going to go down so now we're at the 13879 if i was going to mirror that over here we could say okay there's the 100,000 there's the the standard deduction was at the 12550 and then we're going to look and compare that to the itemized deductions so that's going to be schedule a itemized deductions the big ones like we said was the interest which i think we said was 7000 and then we've got the uh the property tax which we i think we put at 6000 now that would add up to the 13000 but we also unlocked the capacity to deduct some portion of the state tax which i'm not going to get into at this point in time because it'll be dependent on your locale I, you might let the software do that calculation for you or at least help you out we'll talk more about it later but that gives a little added complication whenever you're you're kind of doing the itemized deductions with this because every time you make a change if you're using state income tax taxes then that could change the level of the state income taxes so in any case 879 so we'll say 879 879 and so that totals up to the 13879 so we're going to say, all right, there's the 13879 that pulls over to page one of the form 1040. And now we can see this comparison taking place here. And we're only going to take the one that is higher. So we're taking the itemized deduction because we got our if formula or logic test formula. So now we've got the 100,000 AGI minus the 13879 gets us to the 86,121. Mirroring that on the form over here. There's our 100,000 minus the 13,879, getting us to the 13, uh, uh, there's the, getting us to the 86,121. That's what they said it was over here, right? And then page two, calculating the tax at the 14,696. So we're going to say this is 14,696. So that's kind of the thought process that you can go through and, and plug that information into your formula to get an idea. Uh, of what's going on a little bit more intuitively in a more transparent Excel worksheet. So in future presentations, we'll go into some, some more detail about these individual categories with the Schedule A, but just remember that you, you're generally thinking, what's gonna be the big ones? What's gonna be the ones that are gonna push people over to itemizing? Usually owning the home, the mortgage interest and the related property taxes.